Hey guys, this is Mr. Grice for Algebra 2. We're in Chapter 9.3, and today we're talking about linear programming. And this is day number two. Our learning target today is to be able to use linear programming to solve real-world problems that require maximizing a profit. So, what I want you to do is read number one to yourself and start highlighting and circling things that look important, okay? So, pause that video and get to it. Okay, so there's a lot of information in this. So, the first thing that we always need to do is know what the variables are, and that's related to our question. And the question is asking us, how many of each should the company produce in order to maximize the profit? Each what? Uh, moped and bicycle. Okay, so you need to label one as your X and one as your Y. So my X is going to be the mopeds just because that's first. And then my bicycles. The next thing we want to know is we have to write the objective quantity equation and that's based on the profit. So right here, it tells us the profit. So the profit is 134 for each moped, which is X, plus 20 for Y. Okay, are we good so far? I hope so. Now, Ms. Carranza already wrote down our limits. But let's sh show where those come from. Now, the mopeds, it says it's got to be greater than 10 and less than or equal to 60. And that's where this sentence right here comes into play. It said must produce at least 10, but no more than 60. So that's where those two inequalities come from. And now when we're looking at the second sentence, when we're talking about the bikes, it says they also need to make at least one, but no more than 120. That's where all of that comes from. Okay. So in this example, we were nice where we kind of wrote that down. We're further down. We're not going to do that. Okay. Before we start graphing all of this stuff, let's make sure all of them are in slope intercept form. So we have to solve for x right here, or solve for y, I apologize. So subtract the x to the other side, and you get y is less than or equal to negative x plus 160. Now that we've got all of that, let's start getting to work. So I'm going to continue labeling these. If you notice right here, we're counting by 10. And let's start with the x's first. So x is greater or equal to 10. That is going to be a vertical line. x equals 10, okay? And if we were to shade, I'm not going to shade for every single one of these. We would shade all of that because x is greater than 10. But now we're saying that x is, let me double check the number, 60. So x is less than or equal to 60. So now we're just talking about this number right here, everything in the yellow, okay? But now we've got some more constraints. We're saying that y has to be greater than or equal to 1. So, once again, all of that disappears. y is greater than or equal to 1. It's a horizontal line. Just do your best. It's going to be right above. So it's going to be greater than 1. But then the next one says right here, that it's less than or equal to 120. So 
So it has to be less than 120 and greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. But we still have one more, one more line to do. Okay, and that's right here. So we're starting at 160, and it says our slope is down 1 over 1. Okay, so you kind of get a clue about the line. Got to make sure this is nice and straight. And it's less than that. So what ends up happening is there's our line. Okay? And everything inside of the box, that's what our um, constraints are. Okay? Now, we've got one, two, three, four, five vertices. Okay? One, two, three, four, five. Okay? So, labeling, where I'm going to start down here. That first one is we go 10 to the right and 1 up. Okay, remember y equals 1 there. Come up to my next one. I go 10, but then I am up to 120. Okay, count the lines. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 40 and 120. You go over 2, which means you're at 60 and 100. And then all the way down, our last one is 61. Okay. And now it says to use substitution into our equation. to find out what each of the profits are, okay? And this is where you can use your calculator. So I've got 130 times 10 plus 20 times 1, oh, times 1. So I get 100 or 1,360. We're talking about money. So I'm going to write everything in like that, okay? Now, to show work for each one of these, I would actually make sure that you're writing down 134 times 10 plus, I'm just going to do my next one, 120. So 134 times 10 plus, times 120. And that gives us 3,740. Okay. I'm going to write that in. Is it going to let me do it? Oh, it's money, so I'm writing in green. Okay. So write down what you're plugging in. Twenty times one twenty. Okay, one hundred and thirty. Four times forty. Plus twenty times one hundred and twenty. Okay, so seven thousand seven hundred and sixty. Okay, and you guys can. Get the pattern for this, 134 times 60 plus 20 times, uh, no, not 1,000. Okay, but we get 10,040. And then the last one, which is 134 times 60 plus 20 times 1, which is 20. 
2060. So to maximize their profits, there's the winner. Okay. And so how many of each one should they produce? Well, they should produce 60, and X was mopeds. So 60 mopeds and 100 bicycles. Okay. Number two, Jones Electronics makes LCD and plasma televisions. Mm, those are two variables, probably. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. The equipment in the factory has a manufacturing limit. Ooh, that's a good word. And can produce at most 450 LCD televisions each month. It also has a limit producing at most 200 plasma televisions each month. It costs the company $600 to make LCD and $900 for each plasma. The company has a budget of $360,000 which they can spend in order to make all televisions. How many of each type should they produce in order to maximize the profit? If the profit is 125 for the LCD and plasma is 200. So X and Y, LCD, and plasma. Okay, the next thing is to write the profit equation. And the profit it's going to tell you, ours is, oops, let's make that a little smaller is right there, where it's talking about, it specifically says profit. So that's 125x plus 200y. Now, write a list of the inequalities to graph, graphically represent the constraints of the problem. Now here's the thing, we only gave you these two. But there are three more in the problem, okay? Now, that's where you see the word limit and where it's producing, okay? So, it's saying that there's a limit of producing at most 450 LCD. So, X is the LCD, no more than 450. Okay, that's the most that it can produce. Okay, and it tells us that again, right there, the most it can produce is 200. Okay, now the last one's kind of tricky because it's over two sentences. So they're saying that it's 600 for each plasma plus 900, or for the plasma and 600 for the LCD, I'm sorry. Okay. And they can spend no more than 300, $360,000. That's the most. Okay. They can't go over that budget. Okay. So. Now we have all five inequalities, and now we have to start graphing, okay? So before we start graphing, we have to solve for y over here. We get 900y is less than or equal to negative 600x plus 360,000, okay? Divide by... 900. You can use your calculator, guys. Okay. So y is less than or equal to, that should be negative 2 thirds x plus 400. Okay. So 
Let's look at our labels. We're counting by 25s. I like to know where my hundreds are at. So 25, 50, 75, 100. Just count every four. And that's 100. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And the top one is 500. So I'm going to do the same on the bottom. There's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. All right, these first two are already graphed. X is less than or equal to 450. Remember which one's your X and which one is your Y, okay? So X is less than or equal to 450. There's your line. And that's everything less than that. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And Y is less than or equal to 200. I'm going to go to 200. Draw my line. And now it's less than that. So that's where our answer is so far. But we still have one more line to graph. Okay. And that's right here. So I'm starting at 400. And it tells me, my slope tells me to go down 2 over 3. Down 2 over 3. Down 2 over 3. And we're going to keep doing that. 1, 2, 3. One, two, three. One, two, one, two. Okay, and my next stat would be right around there. I'm just doing that to help out with my line. Okay. So, our line now, our answer, solution set, is all right in here. Okay, and now our vertices, which they're only giving us four now, one, two, three, four, and why don't they want that one? Well, that's at zero, zero, and would they make a profit there? Nope. So that's why we don't need it. Okay, so our four vertices are... We've got 0, 200, 300, 200, 400, 100, and 400, 0. Okay? So you're going to plug all of those into now your profit which the P equals 125X plus 200Y. And remember, when we're showing the work, you're actually going through and plugging in each one of those, and you're going to tell me how much money it is. Okay? So I'm going to pause the video right there. I want you to tell me what all of those equations equal up to. And which ones? Uh, where would they maximize their profits? Okay. All right. Good luck. Pause that video. All right. And there you go. So where would they make the most profit? That's right there. So they would be making 300 LCD TVs and 200 plasma TVs. Okay. All right. Now, the rest of this is homework. You can do one of them. Uh, you can choose either one you want to. It doesn't matter. One of them has a lot more uh, inequalities to work with, and the other one you kind of have to do by yourself. But if you do both, they're extra credit. Okay. So that's it for Algebra 2, Chapter 9.3, Linear Programming, Day 2. If you have any questions, please come find Ms. Kranz or myself. Otherwise, thanks for watching.